Poonam Mahajan, Member of Parliament, Mr. Sambhyak Chakravarti, Navya, and dear friends, indeed a very good evening to all of you. It's a privilege to be speaking at this conclave, the UN Chain Young Changemakers Conclave. And uh, I'm told already, as you've heard, that it has already several achievements to its credit. Specifically, it has influenced policy. It has made business frameworks through its earlier meetings, its core deliberations, and of course, exceptional leadership and provided a great venue for each one of you. The vision of this conclave to empower India's younger generation, in my opinion, is clearly focused because where, that's where the India needs to invest. And you would see that even today's deliberations are focused around the seven superpowers, specifically ranging from green tech to women in power. My compliments to the organizers for having chosen such a forward-looking theme for the conclave. We owe this to our future generations. I'm going to speak on a subject, oceans, sea level rise, implications, and mitigation. I've chosen this specific topic for four specific reasons. First and foremost, it's a global concern. Second, many of us belong to this maximum city, and we will perhaps be the most affected. Thirdly, a very large amount of this population lives in the unorganized sector and will bear the maximum brunt of the rise in sea levels. And lastly, being a naval officer, having served for over 40 years, I know this domain from very close first-hand experience. And of course, that's my bread and butter. As part of the overall situation, let me paint this storytelling picture to you. We've had the COVID. Most of us are alive, up and about, and kicking. Of course, there's another crisis between Ukraine and Russia ongoing. And of course, it will lead to a certain amount of creation of new history. It will also lead to some change in geopolitics and geoeconomics. There's the power of big tech. Some feel it will take away jobs. Some feel it will create more jobs. But I think it will be a good thing in the long run. And last but not the least, the climate change is staring at us in our face. We have to keep our eyes open. And I don't think we can get away from that reality. Mr. Shambi just brought out the World Economic Forum report, the Global Risks Report. And among the top five risks that have been factored there, they include extreme weather, biodiversity loss, natural disasters, human-made environmental disasters, and last but not the least, the most important, climate action failure. Our inability to sustain our efforts, our inability to see results from our efforts is what is clearly focused. And all these risks are related to each other. They also will ex exacerbate the risks of food and water. One is very important that you need to note that none of these risks have been created by the military as such, which is mostly responsible for the wars in the earlier years. When we look at the climate action failure section, I think what is directly related is that the melting of the global ice caps, the global temperatures, and thermal expansion is a reality. The Government of India in its report has clearly brought out that there has been an increase in temperature between 1901 to 2020. So we are seeing disproportionate rise in temperatures and rise in sea levels. This wonderful venue that you see by the sea may not exist if we are failed in our ability to do climate change action. And therefore, I'm glad that many people are looking at it. Specifically, I must quote the Hindustan Times group, 
which has brought it back into focus a couple of days ago. Earlier, the business group, the Economic Times had also brought it into the media. Let me uh, just focus on some of the issues that may interest you. The coastal cities of Mumbai, Mangalore, Kochi, Trivandrum, Chennai, and Vishakapatnam will lose almost 30% of their land mass, which is close to the seas. And many of us live very close by. Several low-lying areas will get inundated. And specifically, Mumbai, Mumbaiites need to worry because it predicts that by 2050, the Bandra Worli Sea Link will be in trouble. The Haji Ali, the JNPT, Savri, and many other areas which are even further low lying will be flooded and people will be moving out of that place. Recently, we've seen a spate of floods, cyclones in our area, and especially the Mumbai people will remember the cyclone last year, Taute. It has brought large amount of damage, and this will likely to go up in scale and in intensity. Irrespective of what we think or how critical we are of these reports, I can assure you one thing. If they are off the mark, they'll be off the mark by a very little percentage. A majority of it will come true. And therefore, the young generation needs to worry and needs to take ownership of this entire problem. Of course, the governments have initiated various steps, including the Prime Minister's vision of zero emission by 2070, national action plan for climate change. Various states have already also chalked out various programs. We in our own state and in Mumbai have a climate action plan 2022, which has been formulated under the guidance of Mr. Aditya Thakre, another young change maker. Between what we can do and what we cannot do, I have just one thing to say. There'll be two strategies. One, either you adapt or you mitigate. If you don't adapt, you'll have very little time for mitigation. And the delay in one segment will lead to causes which will be uncontrollable at a later stage. We also need to look at what we can do what is financially viable, and review the entire infrastructure that is being created in the city of Mumbai specifically, whether it is proof for the climate change plan. Of course, the seas also offer us great benefits, and we can use the seas for many measures. And these could also lead to some plans for reduction in the impact of climate change. We could use ocean-based renewable energy. Some young entrepreneurs can look at it, and it's a working model in some countries, in the Scandinavian countries. The ocean-based transport is far better than the transport system that we own today. And it's much cleaner and more economical. Conservation of the mangroves, the coastal and marine ecosystem, I think each one of them is a great place to invest and to look at. There is also huge and untapped potential for carbon storage in seabed areas. This is a new technology that is emerging. And of course, all these measures will lead us to reduction in the greenhouse gases and reduction in the temperature targets that we have set for ourselves. As for the Navy is concerned, I must tell you that we are used to uncertainty and large number of measures are getting in place. Are we there yet? No, but we are on the way, and we will get there in time. That's my assurance to you. But before I conclude today, I must leave you with this thought that while this is a conclave on seven superpowers, I think we need to add the eighth. And the eighth is the combination of all the seven. I think if we pull together, we'll be able to take it forward. And speci specifically, we owe it to the younger generation because it's your world that we are ruining around. So therefore, we need to take it forward from that world.
from a perspective of an individual as a, as a policy maker, I think each one of us need to pressurize ourselves to look about 20 to 30 years into the future. Because if we don't do that, I think we are putting our younger generation into the harm's way. So therefore, I would say that every year that we fail to take tough decisions, we'll have lesser time for adaptation or mitigation. Therefore, such conclaves must clearly have an agenda to take the issues brought out here to the leadership and the policy makers of tomorrow and today in the government. Because at the end of it, any movement you know, of people from the coastal areas will also impact vote banks. So I think that's where we need to focus it. And we will certainly see a change in this country with younger leadership at every levels in our political system, in our entrepreneur system, in our system of governance. With that, I think I would conclude to say, to bring about a change in thought process, we need to change our priorities, we need to change our future plans, and conclaves such as these have a unique and a very important place in the system. Thank you, and Jai Hind.